What's going on guys? It's Quasi Dog here, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at this guy right here. Now, of course, this is the brand new Apple TV Generation 2. This is actually my first Apple TV, and we'll get into kind of why I decided to go with this guy, because uh, traditionally, my whole home, my whole ecosystem is Google Assistant, Google Home, Nest, all of that stuff, but there was a lot of features within the Apple TV 4K Generation 2 that just intrigued me, so much so that it made me go out and actually spend 260 Canadian dollars on something that I probably could have spent a lot less on. So let's jump into the unboxing experience, see exactly what you get within the packaging, and then go over some of the use cases, maybe set it up together, and just get some overall first impressions and general thoughts on somebody that's never honestly had an Apple TV before. All that and more right after a word from today's video sponsor. If you guys are looking for an affordable Windows 10 key, then you need to do yourselves a favor and check out VIPSCDKey.com. Using the link within the description below, as well as the coupon code GG20, you will have yourselves a brand new Microsoft Windows 10 Pro OEM CD key for as little as $15.82. What are you waiting for? Use that link within the video description and thank you VIPSCDKey for sponsoring today's video. So let's go ahead and let's take the wrapper off of this guy here, just so we can reduce some of the glare so you guys can kind of get a, a first-hand look at the box because in Apple fashion, it's, it's pretty minimalist. There's not a whole lot going on. You have just like your classic white box. We have the Apple TV 4K. Again, this is generation two. Some specifications on the box as far as kind of what it can do and then on the bottom here, we can see a, hide my face, see a price tag, see some different things on the bottom. But the main reason why I went with this guy here is just to generally kind of feature-proof myself. And I hate that terminology and I try not to use it that often, but there are very few media players on the market right now that support HDMI 2.1 that have the availability to go into Dolby Vision, that have the availability to do HDMI 2.1 for 4K at a high refresh rate. And things are coming, content is getting to be available when we look at surpassing 4K 60. I believe Red Bull TV is starting to look at the option through their platform of starting to record things in 120 frames natively and then put it out to the market in 120 hertz. So with this guy here coupled with 120 hertz TV, theoretically all of that will be possible. The other reason why I ended up going with the Apple TV over like the Chromecast generation X, Y, and Z, whatever the newest ones are, I have a couple around the house, is there are actually some decent shows coming on to Apple TV Plus and for the life of me, I just can't cast any of them. All of my TVs are Android based and I know it's coming. The rumor mill is speculating that they are going to start to play together a little bit better. But for now, I can only stream it on my upstairs Roku TV and I like consuming media in my office. So let's get right into the package here. See exactly what you get. So right out of the gate, we have the Apple TV. So there is kind of what you get. Now, the Apple TVs are a little bit bigger. So of course, if you're looking for a media player that's going to kind of be concealed and fit behind a TV or kind of be hidden in a media center, this is a little bit bigger than maybe something that you're looking to get yourself into. We're gonna remove the outside wrapper here. And in the back, very simple. You just have, of course, your power inlet, you have your HDMI 2.1, and then you have your um, ethernet. So I would assume this is a 10, 100, 1000. They'd be foolish not to do that. And then on the bottom side, you have your feet, and then we have some kind of cooling vents on there as well. So overall, Apple TV, it is small. It's like the size of the palm of my hand, or I guess the size of my hand, but definitely not as small as something that can dangle behind your TV, like a Chromecast or a Roku stick or anything like that. 
Now, the remote is definitely something that's been redesigned and something that a lot of people were super excited to get their hands on. So here we have the remote itself. It's very nice, it's very comfortable. The buttons have a nice tactile click on them as well. And of course, this is Siri enabled. So on the side here, you can see that you do have a Siri button. That way you can summon the commands, tell it, you know, play X, Y, Z, whatever you want to play on TV. Um, overall, first impressions of the remote, very nice. You've got, like I said, nice tactile buttons and everything like that. In the side compartment here, we have a pretty nice power cable. It looks like it's going to be plenty long, which is good because I route my power cables through the wall. So length was going to be a potential concern for me, but doesn't look like it's going to be an issue with this power cable. We do not have a 90 degree end, which I'm a little sad to see. I wish more manufacturers would get on board with a 90 degree, but this is going to go in a power bar um, on the other side of my wall on kind of the opposite side in a closet. So not a big deal. And you know what? Maybe the 90 degree would have covered another plug. I do like that the power supply itself in the Apple TV is internal. So you don't have to worry about a big bulky brick. Um, the uh, Google Chromecast brick is absolutely huge and it takes up like two plugs in my power bar. So that's never that fun. We have your documentation and you do actually have a USB-A to lightning cable as well. Interesting choice because for the most part, most devices in 2021 from Apple have actually opted for the USB-C standard. So I was assuming we would see that at least on the kind of brick side, that way it would coincide with a lot of the bricks that people may have started repurchasing. But I get that, you know, not everybody that has an Apple TV is going to have an iPhone. So maybe this was the universal choice. Of course, they don't give you the power brick. The rest of the box is just empty. And the other thing they don't give you is an HDMI cable. So for those of you who didn't know that, um, no HDMI. I, I don't think it's necessarily like new info. It's something that's been covered a lot. I usually opt for these guys right here. They can be picked up on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the video description. Um, I really like the Ugreen products. I use them quite a bit on uh, HDMI and USB, but this is an 8K high-speed cable. So this is actually capable of either going up to 8K at 60 Hertz, or of course, 4K at 120 Hertz. It's a braided cable. You know what? Maybe we'll just take a, a very, very quick look at it because this isn't necessarily the topic at hand, but it wouldn't hurt for you guys to see what you're getting into. But this is also a really long cable because again, I route this stuff into my wall. I change out TVs maybe more often than I'd like to admit. And just going preemptively with HDMI 2.1 um, is going to help me out in the long run when consumer grade 8K becomes available. Again, we're looking at that 4K 120 Hertz. We're looking at Dolby Atmos sound, kind of all of that stuff. So here is the U green cable right here. And again, this is a 10 foot. They have like three, six. I just go for 10 and this is actually like 20 bucks Canadian. So really, really good buy. Um, so that was just, I guess, generally the unboxing experience when it comes to what you get with the Apple TV. This is running the A12 processor. <clears throat> Excuse me, the A12 processor. And a lot of people were underwhelmed at that decision given that it's a processor that's in their kind of lower grade or older devices at this point, their iPhones. But you don't need a lot of power to run something just for entertainment. And that's been proven with, again, Chromecast and different things like that with very minimal OSs. It really just needs to kind of decode or encode, whatever you want to call it, uh, the signal that's being sent to it. Now, you do get like Apple Arcade on these. So with that, you will need a little bit more power because you're rendering that stuff from the box itself and not through like a digital streaming service. So I get why they didn't just completely forget about the processor and really give you an underwhelming long-term performance out of this, but uh, I think it's fine. I mean, the A12 is still holding up on their phones, so I don't foresee any sort of issues. So 
we're gonna route this guy, we're gonna set it up, and uh, I'm gonna take you through that process because I've never actually set one of these up before. So let's, uh, let's do that behind the scenes and we'll be back with you. All right, so we have everything routed behind the TV and we're gonna try our best, I guess, to get everything in the shot. I've got the remote, we've got it all paired up, and now let's take a look and go through together the setup process because I think this is gonna be worthwhile if you guys are interested in kind of how this process starts. So. We're gonna kind of come over here in frame. And one of the very first things that it's asking is our preferred language. So we're gonna use the remote, of course, you go up and down. Wow. So it is, and maybe I'll kind of come back up. So the interesting thing is this is a scroll wheel. And man, is it ever sensitive, but it feels good. So we're gonna pick English, of course, we're gonna sit back down and see if we can go through this. We are in Canada. And I have a habit of pointing this towards the TV, but I can point it towards you guys. I don't know if it's Bluetooth. It looks like it has an IR blaster, but I mean, it is what it is. So we're gonna set up with our phone. Of course, I have right here a uh, 12 Pro. And so unlock your phone, connect to a Wi-Fi network, turn on Bluetooth, and hold the device close to this Apple TV. So I have pretty much all of that done right now. We're gonna go into Bluetooth, and I guess we're gonna set this down, and I have the Apple TV just kind of routed down here. Uh, so lock it and try, oh, there we go. So we can see right here, we have the option to set this up. So we're gonna hit set up and we're gonna continue on as normal. Right now it's just connecting. So it's gonna be a couple of minutes here. We're gonna put in our code and try to kind of stay at a frame as much as possible for you guys as well. So right now we're just going through the setup process. It says the exact same thing. I'm sure you guys can't see it from all the way over there, but it just simply says setting up Wi-Fi. So this is gonna send over all of my information. Now, if you guys don't have an iPhone, it'll still be very easy to set this up. As you saw previously, there was an option to set up manually, and that's gonna allow you to do the setup process with the remote control. So we're just gonna wait for this. Other than that, how are you guys doing? Doing all right, I just got done surgery last week, so this week we're back to doing YouTube-based content. I took a little bit of time off as we had some hospital visits, some testing, some kind of preparations for last week. Uh, require password, I always like require after 15 minutes, it's just easier that way. Uh, settings from your iPhone, so of course we want to allow Siri. This is just saying that we can now do everything off of the remote control. So off of this guy right here. Uh, so yeah, we can do all of that. We're just gonna hit continue. And I do not have a TV provider. If you do, of course, that's where you would set it up. Now in this case, this is going to be, I mean, I guess I can call this the entertainment room. We're gonna call it the theater room. Uh, see the world with an aerial screensaver. Yeah, sure. Uh, I usually share with the app developers uh, terms and conditions, so you pretty much have to agree if you want to use this stuff. And we definitely want to try Dolby Vision. Now, in a little bit, we're going to turn Dolby Vision off because I do want to try that screen calibration that you can do specifically with your iPhone device and the light meter on it. Uh, Apple TV switched to Dolby Vision at 60 hertz, uh, so we can see a clear picture. And Dolby Vision's basically just gonna give you your mastering as kind of best as it can. And here we have the interface. So this may be familiar to some of you guys. To me, I'm completely foreign to this. So the tiles, this automatically is very rem reminiscent of like the Roku TV. I prefer to have my Roku upstairs um, just because my five-year-old knows how to operate it very well. She's okay with the Android TV, but there's just, there's more to it. There's more that could potentially go wrong. Uh, now I wanna take a quick look into the settings here and we're gonna kind of run through. So we have the screensaver, dark mode for the appearance, uh, restrictions are off, Siri is on, language, history, 
everything here is pretty much the way that I would want it. So we can hit back. Let's go into users and accounts. And of course this scraped me over, which is perfect. We're gonna go back and video and audio. So we're in Dolby Vision. And like I said, we're gonna go back out of that. We're gonna try that custom calibration. Uh, match content, Apple TV will use your selected display format to match content without alterations. Apple TV can also switch formats automatically to match the dynamic range and frame rate. Sure. Let's try that. I guess we can. So I think this is also one of those things that's locked out when you have the Dolby Vision. So we're gonna explore that as well. Check HDMI connection. Now in this case, we don't really have to because even though this panel is 120 Hertz, um, it only has HDMI 2.0. So that's going to restrict us to 4K 60 Hertz, which is fine. Uh, we will be replacing this panel in the coming months with something that does have HDMI 2.1 variable refresh rate, kind of all that new stuff that we want to get into. Uh, default audio, we do not want TV speakers, but apparently that is the only option. So this will pair with wireless speakers, so Apple branded speakers that'll also pair with AirPods, which I think is gonna be really cool for like nighttime viewing for me if I don't want to disturb anybody. Uh, audio format, we can leave that auto. Uh, reduce loud sounds off, navigation clicks. Uh, audio mode. So 16 bit or auto. We're just gonna leave most things auto. And here, if I can actually just get it your way for a second, you can see the color balance. So here, we're gonna have to change that after the fact. We're gonna go in and we're gonna turn off the Dolby Vision. Uh, color bar. So, I mean, that was the general audio video. Uh, AirPlay and HomeKit. So the Apple TV will allow you to use it as a HomeKit device. So you can actually start building your ecosystem. I don't need to worry about really any of this stuff. Home theater is the room. Remotes and devices. Uh, accessibility apps. Let's see network. So it's on my five gigahertz. I want to throw that on my five gigahertz two, because my five gigahertz two is actually my Wi-Fi six band. So that's just gonna give it more, uh, more delivery speed, I suppose. And there we go. All of that is good. System, system updates. Uh, we don't need to worry about any of that right now. So there's a general overview of the settings. Now, if we go into Apple TV, I really like the pop up on the uh, on the alerts. Now, I actually have like my Prime Video and stuff all set through Apple TV already for the most part. My Crave is connected as well. But let's go into the Apple TV Plus library because I know that they have really good content. And let's take a look at the Elephant Queen. Just just for the heck of things, I think there's going to be less faces in this that are gonna kind of screw with my, my face capture here as well. And... Okay, so it is coming through my surround sound, which is perfect. Tiny world in a land of giants. It's the smallest creatures that make the biggest difference. Yep. Both the night in color. With next generation technology, we can see the night. So I'm just going to get out of the way for a second so you guys can see. In 2020, the world shut down. First impression, it, it looks really good. Like, really, really good. On Apple TV Plus. And I guess that was only an ad, too. Now we can swipe down, we can see the chapters, and just to show you guys as well, the remote control, it is touch base. So I think I mentioned that before. You can swipe down, swipe up, you can see those gestures happening behind me. I'm not super consistent on getting it to launch, but we can make it work. Blacks are nice and creamy as well. This TV is an older TV. It's uh, it's one by Hisense, but it still impresses me like on a daily basis. We're gonna turn this way down. It 
And we're gonna skip ahead, skip ahead. Most of us. And I don't think there's anything wrong with the way that that looks at all. I'm actually just looking in the monitor and it looks good on the capture. Now, of course, you guys will see it a little bit differently through the camera. That's to be expected, of course. Now, the one thing that I want to check, and let's see if we can go right back to the home screen. I want to go back into the settings. So let's get out of Apple TV. Let's go back into the settings. And what I wanna do is I wanna go back into audio video for a second. And I wanna change the format. So here we can see all of the different formats. 1080p has Adobe Vision as well, which is great. You even have like PAL, so 50 Hertz on here. I'm sure it probably has a 24. But let's go into just regular 4K HDR. We're going to turn off the Dolby Vision and we're going to hit OK. And I want to go back and now we actually should have those abilities. Yeah, so you can change your chroma here. So 422, 420, those are universally standard. You're really not going to see like a 444 coming out of this. Uh, content match, now we can come in here and we can change all of these as well. But the one thing that I want to see is I want to see the uh, da, 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 the calibration. So this is something I've really been wanting to test. So adjust the color balance. So Apple TV will measure and adjust your television's color balance. For best results, avoid bright and lightly and highly saturated picture modes like vivid or sport. Now I have this on like a theater mode. And we're just going to double check that if I can find my TV remote here. So we're going to go into my picture profile. And so this is actually an HDR game. Let's change this to HDR theater. Because theater mode for me, I have like all of the extra bits turned off. And I also just want to check that the backlight. Yep. So local dimming set to high on this guy as well. And so it actually popped up automatically and it says, hey, we want to do a color balance. So we're going to hit continue. This is now sending the command. This should change. So turn your iPhone around so the front facing camera is pointing at your television. Hold it centered inside the outline within one inch of the screen. So like this. And I'm really not sure why it's doing this so many times. So make sure the top edge of your iPhone is completely inside the outline. I mean, do I have to hold it farther away? There we go. So now we can view the results and see exactly what it looks like. So we're going to hit view results. So if we use the original, oh, wait, 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 use balanced. Can I go in and see the before and after view results? So that's really interesting. So I actually see no change. Maybe I'm going too fast. Use original. Does it just take a second? 
No, I think that was just the loop. So I do have this TV calibrated and I'm just noticing, wow. So that's like really blown out. Let me kind of step back for you guys. We're gonna bring this way, way down. There, so hopefully you guys can see that a little bit better. So what I've noticed, what I've looked at this online myself, and that's why I wanted to get some real world results as well, is the original always showed the water is really, really blue and the sand is like really, really white. And then the balance mode would show what we see right here, where sand, of course, has some light brown. It's actually got some some different variations and different shades. We can see that the water is more of like a like an aqua green. But in this case, for me, the TV seems fairly well calibrated. And again, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go back in because I really I don't believe it. I mean, we're gonna pick use balance, but I'm immediately gonna come back up here and enable the Dolby Vision because I mean, why Why wouldn't you? Now it's time to bring you guys back to ba -da -ba -ba -ba, like there. I think that looks good. Uh, so we're gonna hit okay on here. And that's pretty much like the, the full setup, I guess. Uh, we can go back one more time. And again, we, we touch base, I guess there's a little bit more to this than just the uh, the ability to watch content. So right up here at the top, we have your activity. Now I do have an Apple Watch, typically it's dead. Um, I haven't worn it since last week when I got my operation, but you're gonna be able to use the Apple Fitness Plus. I have an exercise bike, so I, I very much plan on actually using this to its full potential. And then you have your Apple Arcade as well. And then with the Arcade, you can come in, you can start playing tons of games. So um, start playing auto renews. Uh, we're gonna skip that for now. But here you're gonna have all of these different games that you can play. You guys should be no stranger to a lot of these. Now some games like NBA, they will need a controller. Other games you can just use the TV remote, which is gonna work perfectly fine. But there are some decent games. This catalog like is forever evolving as well, which is super, super cool. Um, I may get into that. I, I may not. I'm, I'm, if I'm gonna play games, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my PS5. So, I don't know. That's just me. And of course you can come in, you can view your pictures. I don't know what's gonna come up. We're not gonna click on that. And then you have the availability, of course, to go into the App Store and really come in and start downloading whatever you want. Now, if I go into my purchased, we're going to see kind of like all of the apps. So Cineplex, um, you've got Twitch. And now I, that's a huge one for a lot of people to have Twitch on here. You have your Prime Video, which of course I have linked through my Apple TV Plus. You have Spotify. So a big list of things that you can actually get. Um, so I'm gonna use this for, I guess, a couple of days. Maybe I'm gonna square off and come talk to you guys again. Um, I'm gonna use this for the next couple of days. Overall, I mean, it's a lot of money. 250 is really no joke. Um, for me, honestly, with the ever evolving catalog of Apple TV Plus and the inability to watch it in my main theater area, that was the driving force to get this. The future proofing is nice as well, again, with the HDMI 2.1, with the ability to do high refresh rate 4K content, Dolby Vision, like there's definitely a lot of positives. I think if you just want an entertainment device and you don't care about the home kit, you don't care about the games, and you don't care about the extra quality, then maybe something else might fit your needs. And heck, for people that are early adopters, you might even be able to grab like an old series or generation four Apple TV from your local used market and that may do you just fine. But for me, I'm thankful to have the fantastic support of you guys from, from fans, from viewers that help make these purchases possible. So I wanted to treat myself just a little bit, make some content for you guys in turn. 
And uh, thank you as well, VIP SCD Keys for sponsoring the video to help pay for some of this as well. Goku, you as well, man, always appreciated. But uh, that's, that's it. That was just an unboxing and a general overview kind of experience on how to set it up. I'm still really surprised about that auto calibration. I think you guys will see some better results on a TV that's just in like your standard mode. But for me, I have mine dialed in with the appropriate white balances anyway. So I'm not super shocked that I didn't see a difference, but I am still a little shocked. But uh, until my next video, guys, my name is Quizzy Dog. You guys have been awesome. And we'll catch you all in my next one. Take care.